what's up guys welcome back to the ufc arena we're talking ufc fight night whitaker versus Gastelum. so the first fight we're gonna get into is andre arlovsky versus chase schumann this fight should be an interesting one at one point in time arlovsky seemed to be you know at the end of his career it seemed as though you know it was time for him to retire and then he just kept on winning he was on a four fight losing streak he had lost the tie to Ivasa, Shamil Abdurahimov, Walt Harris, Augusto Sakai and it seemed like you know Arlovsky is done this is the end then he beat Ben Rothwell he lost to Rosenstrike but then he beat Philly Phillips and Tanaboza and all of a sudden Arlovsky won three out of his last four fights like this man is 42 years old but he's still kicking he lost his last fight to Tom Aspinall but Tom Aspinall is an exciting prospect in the heavyweight division so there's not too much shame in that now Andrzej Arlowski he's never gonna get another title shot he's never gonna reach back to the top of the division but if he's comfortable fighting where he is right now making money he has a significant name so he does make a decent amount of money when he fights but if he's fighting to become champion again then he should retire but i don't think he's fighting for that so he's going against chase Sherman. he was in the ufc before he went on a three fight losing streak he got ko'd twice and he lost a unanimous decision and he got cut by the ufc and then he came back he fought his way back he joined a promotion called island fights and he was on a three fight winning streak there he finished everyone and he fought his way back into the ufc and when he made his debut again he won so he's currently riding a four fight win streak and i think that this fight is there for him to win alovsky is not an easy fight but if chase Sherman has really improved then he should be able to beat Alowski, I think. Alowski serves as a gatekeeper in many ways. So if Chase Sherman can't beat Alowski, then he's definitely, definitely not going to cut it in the UFC this time around either. But I'm going to go with Chase Sherman. They're both pretty much well-rounded fighters. But this is going to be a striking affair. They're both strikers for the most part. I'm going to go with Chase Sherman. And I'm going to say a decision. Because Alowski is tough. Although at one point he was chinny. But... Right now, he seems to um, have a pretty good chin, so I'll say a decision. Next up, we have Jeremy Stevens versus Jokar Close. This is the fight of the night right here. These two guys always come to fight. Jeremy Stevens is one of the most dangerous guys on the roster that you could bounce up low in the rankings. What do I mean by that? He loses a lot. <laughs> he wins, he loses, but he's never not a danger to his opponent and he's always a hard fight for the most part even though he loses his fights it's never like a dominant victory or like he just gets beaten up it's always a tough fight and anytime you sign on the paper to fight Jeremy Stevens it's gonna be a tough fight it's gonna be no different with this fight with Chicago Close things have been pretty tough for Jeremy Stevens he hasn't had a win since 2018 February 2018 was the last time Jeremy Stevens won and I was against Josh Emmett after that he got finished by Jose Aldo he got defeated by Zabit he lost to Yair and he got knocked out by Calvin so not the best but who knows how he's gonna bounce back but regardless of that this is still gonna be a very dangerous fight for Jokar. Jokar has the better record but he's not as dangerous as Stevens in terms of power and being a finisher. Most of Close's wins have come by decision. 7 by decision, 4 by knockout. You know what? I think I'm gonna go with the underdog in this fight. I'm gonna say Jeremy Stevens wins this fight via knockout in the second round. I think it's about time for Stevens to bounce back here. It's not going to be easy, but I'm going to give him the victory. And finally, we have the main event of the evening and the fight that everyone is looking forward to the most. Robert Whittaker versus Kelvin Castellum. This fight was supposed to happen a long time ago when they were scheduled to fight. It would have been a championship fight, but... Robert Whittaker had some complications and he wasn't able to fight at the last minute and that was heartbreaking you know but 
here we are Gastelum versus Whitaker and honestly this time around I think it's less competitive than it would have been back then why do I say that right now Robert Whitaker looks like Robert Whitaker he's on point his last two fights he was impressive he was you know he was there and he won even when I had him losing to Kanane he was able to pull it out and every time I underestimate Robert Whitaker he somehow pulls it out this time though I have him as the favorite <laughs> so I guess we'll see if he loses because I'm actually picking him to win this time the first time that Gastelum and Whitaker were matched up I think I gave Gastelum a much better chance of winning because Gastelum was doing really well back in 2016 he defeated Johnny Hendricks then he defeated Tim Kennedy he then defeated Vitor Belfort which got overturned for my one but I mean come on right so that's three he lost to Chris Weidman and then he knocked out Brisbane and he defeated Jackery and then he was up to fight Robert Whittaker in 2019 and he ended up fighting Adesanya instead for the belt that version of Kelvin Gastelum was a dynamic striker he was fast his punches were so quick and that one too is so vicious and that version of Kelvin Gastelum I think that was preparing for Robert Whittaker was gonna be a very very dangerous fight for Whittaker however looking at Gastelum in his last fight against Ian Heinish I saw some things that I don't think are going to help him in this fight one he looked like he bulked up a bit he got bigger you know and he was he took this wrestling heavy approach and Whitaker has excellent anti-wrestling techniques he has excellent takedown defense he has excellent strike excellent movement and distance control which helps him avoid wrestlers and if Gastelum is coming in with a wrestling heavy approach I don't think it will work out well for him and on top of that Gastelum striking against Ian Heinish almost looks as though it regressed a little bit because of this added weight that he put on he seemed a lot slower he didn't seem sharp and snappy like the Gastelum that we came to know and the Gastelum that I think is most dangerous he did not seem like that version of Gastelum in his last fight and I don't think that will work to his benefit against Whitaker. Whitaker is just as fast as he always was just as dangerous he has that bouncy movement that in and out that in movement that he always does and I think honestly he's going to be able to outstrike this version of Gastelum and Gastelum is not going to be able to implement his wrestling the way that he did against Ian Heinish. If by some miracle <laughs> Gastelum could take down Whitaker and keep him there and beat him on the ground then okay sure but I don't see that happening so I'm gonna go with Robert Whitaker for this fight and we know that Gastelum is very very hard to finish so I'm gonna go with a decision a lot of decisions probably on this card so yeah thank you so much for tuning in if you enjoy my content please remember to like please remember to subscribe and I'll see y'all in the next one